In those days, Caesar Augustus, Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to the firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory... And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem, and let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about his, this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what these shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On this most holy day, we light all four candles in our Advent wreath, and we are reminded of the expectation, preparation, proclamation, and revelation of his coming. Now we light the Christ candle. We rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. If you would, bow your heads in a word of prayer. Gracious and mighty King, we celebrate your goodness to us as we join the triumph and joy of Christmas. As you, your love has been revealed in all of its fullness, we pray that love may abound in our hearts. During this special day, grant us the spirit of Christ that we may live in the fullness of his character every day. In his name we pray. Amen. Hey everybody, I'd just like to welcome everybody to our uh, Christmas Eve streaming service and uh, it's a little bit weird but uh, I think we're going to enjoy worshiping the Lord in this marvelous time. I've been telling everybody the whole time that I just love every minute of it. I love every minute of this gift that God has given us and bow with me as you're sitting at home watching this. Father, we just come to you and we... Thank you so much for Jesus, for forgiving us our sins, for making us, making a way for us to be reconciled to you in this wonderful story and wonderful time. Bless our time together and bless this worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
That there is a king in Emmanuel. God is with us. That king is with us today.
Merry Christmas, everyone. We're so thankful for all of you. It's uh, different, again, being here without any faces, but uh, we know that Jesus is here, and we know that you're out there to hear his word. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we know this has been a difficult year for many, but some maybe the worst year of their life. But the announcement that was to those shepherds, God, that there would be good news, a great joy for all people because there's been born for us a Savior, and it's Jesus, it's you. And um, although that came thousands of years ago, it is relevant today. You have went to the cross, risen from the dead. You're on your throne next to the Father, and it is the greatest news of all. So fill us with your Holy Spirit this year, God. Whatever anyone's going through, God, help them to know that you're there. You want to hold them. You want to be with us. And fill us with your Holy Spirit. And thank you, Jesus, for what you went through for us on the cross. And thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, the story unfolds in, in the second chapter of Luke. We're going to start in verse 1. It's a Christmas story. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all of the inhabited earth. And this was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary who was engaged to him and was with child. Now while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in cloths, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from him into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem then, and let's see this thing that's happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry, and they found their way to Mary and Joseph and the little baby as he was laying in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondered them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen just had been told them. And again, fill us with your Holy Spirit and thank you, Jesus for this gift, and we love you. In your name we pray, amen. This story, it was a 70-mile journey. There were no taxi cabs, no heated 
limousines. I'm sure it was on a donkey that she rode, fully pregnant and, and probably labor pains beginning 70 miles. She traveled, and when they got there, the Bible says that there was no room for him in the end. There was no room. You know, one of the most heartbreaking things, I believe, for our father is when he sees people not still making room for his treasured son, Jesus, in their hearts. And this Christmas, I know there's more room in my heart. I know I'm saved, but I can welcome him deeper into my heart, and all of us can, and it brings the glory of God into our lives. The Bible says that the glory of the Lord shone around them. This Savior that was born, it took years for even the apostles to fully understand what this Savior was to do. You know, we think of a Savior many times as a lifeguard saving someone that's drowning. The disciples many times were in boats and they thought they were going to drown and Jesus saved them. This is a different salvation. This is salvation from our sins, something no lifeguard, no prophet could give, only Jesus going to the cross for us. The Bible says that the glory of the Lord shone around the shepherds. They were outcasts, but God's glory shone around them to let them know even an outcast has a job in God's kingdom. This glory, Jesus talked about it. He said, she, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He is the light to penetrate into the darkest heart, into the loneliest of people. David found this psalm, and, and he said when his enemies were after him, he said, God, you light my lamp, and the Lord God illumines my darkness. Now this year, whatever we're going through as a Christian, God wants us to know that he is the light of the world, and he lets his light through the Holy Spirit shine through us. Jesus said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So I uh, ask you to, if you have never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, to do that today, for tomorrow may not come. It's not a, a difficult thing, and people make it out to be difficult, and we feel like we have got to stop sinning before we can have a Savior to save us of our sins. And it's the exact opposite. The Savior wants to forgive us of our sins and then to give us strength to be able to conquer even death and to be able to know truth so that we can live a different life. And then to take that light and shine it into other people's lives that have lost hope and are, are burdened with loneliness, feel like they can't take another step. Father, I want to lead us in a prayer. And those who are listening out there, maybe they've never said this. Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. And I believe that you did come to this earth and go to a cross, innocent and blameless, to take our sins, to wash away all of our shame and guilt and sins, to provide forgiveness through your blood. And I invite you into my heart. I believe you died for me, and I want to receive you as my Savior. And Lord, we love you and thank you for the gift of your Son. In your name we pray, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, the Bible says that the angels, the same angels that were announcing this birth, multitudes saying glory to God in the highest, they're having another praise party in heaven because you're going to be in heaven need to tell someone about that so that they can go to heaven. And if you've been saved most of your life, we all need revival. And this Christmas season, I just encourage you, draw deeper into God's heart. Proclaim the gospel. It said the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. Just had been told them, open the Bible in your homes. I love you all, and God bless you, and I am thankful, thankful for our Savior, and I'm thankful for all of you that are listening. In your name we pray, Jesus, and we love you. Amen.